another beautiful morning guys gorgeous day welcome to another fish head live stream we're out here at the neighborhood lake dylan has named it lake gill since we don't know what the name of this lake is it's not on any maps or anything so it's technically an unnamed lake i guess so lake gill it is Dylan's going to be fishing for bluegill. Lucas is hanging out with us. He's not fishing yet, but he'll probably get in on the action here shortly. I'm going to go ahead and get two catfish rods set up. We're going to see if we can't catch a catfish in here. What's going on over there? But I'm going to grab the rod holders and the rods, get those guys set up right here, and then we'll be fishing. We'll hang out for like an hour or so. Just have a nice Easter fish session before we got to go home and cook up some food, do a little yard work and all that good stuff. But we're doing it a little late. We planned on getting out here early this morning, but had some dog issues last night and some sleeping issues and all other stuff. So needed to sleep a little bit more, but we're out here. Appreciate you coming in. Bank fishing adventures in the house. What's up, brother? Catfish and bluegill today, buddy. I'm gonna get the catfish rod set up right now. I'm just gonna stick two sand spikes in the ground. P and B catfishing. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, the dog got out of the house last night. I was taking him out for his last walk of the night. It was like around midnight. Normally I take him out one time and then take and then take myself to bed. He got off the leash, ran around the property for three hours. I kept trying to catch him and catch him and catch him. He would let me get close and then just take off. So finally I gave up and I sat on my recliner to rest for a little bit with the front door light on and the back door light on, hoping he would just maybe come to the door and scratch. I woke up at like six this morning and heard him barking way off in the distance. So I went out, started roaming the property again. I finally found him. And he did the one runoff, but I think he'd had enough. So he ran like maybe 50 yards and then stopped and then walked over to me and just fell down on the ground in front of me so I could grab him. So that was my whole night of dog issues and trying to sleep a little bit. So after that, I grabbed a couple hours of sleep instead of coming out here for the daylight or the sunrise fishing like we were planning. So that's why we're out here now. But I'm going to get it set up so we can do it. We do have a little bit of top water weed issue this morning. The wind kind of blew it in towards this side of the lake. So we're gonna have to fish around that a little bit. Not too bad. Use my rod, Dylan. Well, aren't you bluegill fishing? Nah, I'll just take turns. I'm gonna catfish. Catfish.
It is an absolutely gorgeous day out here today. Happy Easter. Beautiful day out. It's like 69 degrees. A little bit of a breeze. Nice and sunny. Absolutely gorgeous. I got some liver soaked and catfish nectar soaked chicken breast. I'm going to put on these hooks, cast them out. See if we can get a channel cat to come in here and take this chicken. All right, we're fishing. We tried this spot briefly a couple days ago. Had some nibbles, a little tapping on the rods, but could not get one to bite. We did a bluegill fish off between me and Dylan. We actually ended up tying. So technically the fish off is still at a tie. We haven't had a tie breaker yet. We have not caught a catfish yet. We did some, a lot of live catfishing yesterday over at Lake Talquin and got skunked. I thought I found this new spot. This guy has a feeder set up on the back of his dock. He pulls catfish out of there all the time. We must have just picked the wrong day, but we got skunked. All right, we're set. Oh, hamburgers. Hamburgers sounds great. Good to see you in here, Stacy. We got prime rib. Mama Fishhead went to Publix couple days ago and picked up a prime rib for Easter dinner we were gonna do like turkey and ham and stuff because we were having a bunch of people come over but then we all got sick I'm actually still just kind of getting over it I didn't take any medicine today for the first day in like a week but I can still definitely tell I'm not quite a hundred percent can't let that stop me from fishing though. It did stop me from fishing for like a week. Pretty brutal, brutal cold I had. Or the flu maybe. Steven, thanks for coming in. Happy Easter. We're getting some lines wet for a little while before I gotta go back and do a little yard work and do up Easter dinner.
another beautiful day. Maybe since we were just here two days ago and I threw like a bunch of extra bait in the water when we were leaving, it chummed up the area a little bit and brought them in. So maybe that might help. Who knows? Hope it doesn't get too windy. Dylan and I got these little lav mics that we were clipping on our hat or on our shirt so both of us could be mic'd up for the live streams we took them up to south carolina and i have no idea what happened to them we can't find them unless it's somewhere where i haven't unpacked yet but i feel like i've looked everywhere i think they might have fallen out the truck or something at the campsite while we were up there i don't know so we're Going old school, just me talking into the phone. Dylan's not mic'd up. BK, back in the house. Uh, I didn't bring my bass rod. It's still sitting on the boat from yesterday. All we got is the little bluegill rods and the catfish stuff. I should have brought it. Although the bass fishing in this lake has been super slow lately. We've been out here like, I don't know, 10 times in the last month and a half, and I've only caught one bass. We catch lots of bluegill. We've actually caught more bullhead than bass lately. Let me see if I have a different kind of lure. Hey, Stuart. Stewart's in the house. Happy Easter. Happy Easter, BK. Catfishing at the neighborhood lake. Dylan has named it Lake Gill. So we're going to start calling it Lake Gill if I can think of it. <laughs> we're rigged in rigged and baited and out there fishing for about i don't know three or four minutes so far i'm hoping that because we were out here the other night and threw the extra bait in the water when we were leaving maybe that chummed up the area a little bit kind of like how some people throw a can of corn out there the day before they go There's a woodpecker banging on the tree right here next to us. <laughs> Can you guys hear the woodpecker? Oh, I hear splashing. Nothing yet, Stuart. We just started. We've only been live for 13 minutes. I just got the catfish rods in like five minutes ago. I'm going to throw the little bread ball bait in too, just for the heck of it. See you later, PB. Happy Easter to you. Enjoy the grandkids. Bread ball.
So this reel, when you let the butt, when you let your finger off the button for the line to go out, it doesn't go out, and then it recoils, and then it goes out. So there's definitely something messed up with it. I think we might have to throw away this reel. I'm going to try to release the line and throw it myself. But these little cheapo proficiency reels, like $5 reel, you got to imagine that it's going to just be garbage and have to get thrown away eventually. CFM in the house. No bait. Let me grab some bait. Ooh, Dylan's on. Dylan got one. Check this out. So is this a competition? I don't think we'll do a competition today. We'll just keep score. This is or should it be the tiebreaker, guys? What do you yeah, think? This should be the tiebreaker. I'm not going to be fishing for bluegill as much as Dylan. Nice one with the stripes. Oh, it's got a black dot on its face. Bright yellow belly. No, it's a black dot. Oh yeah, the black dot on the back of the fin. Kind of cool. <laughs> One O Dylan. Dylan wants his Easter Sunday win. I guess I'll play along, even though I can't cast with this reel. Grampy Fishhead, Happy Easter! Thanks for coming in, Dad. Yeah, this reel has stopped working. So what I'm going to do is just release the line and then manually try to throw it out there with my hand. I had to do that the other day, Dad. So now you got to do with it. Hey, it works. Okay. Oh, I just had a solid hit. It went like a foot down and stayed down. That was crazy. I've taken it apart, cleaned it, oiled it, put new line on it. This thing's just a piece of junk. We've got like six or eight of these little push button reels. I'll just take this one off and put a different one on there. Every year there's this fishing event at the Bo Turner Center for kids. We usually take the take the boys there. They go like fishing in the pond and when they leave they give them a little rod like this. So we've got a bunch of them from all the times we've gone. Yeah, we don't need to try to save this little guy. Got our five dollars worth out of it. It actually works pretty good throwing it.
Totally under, but it got my bait. A tournament. Week long tournament, first day for kids. Nice. Oh, sweet. Good luck. Got my bait. Oh, Dylan's on again. Oh, he's off. <laughs> He's off. It jumped and it popped out while he jumped. That's cool. Very cool. Hey, bring one of the pieces of bread over. liver and catfish nectar soaked chicken breasts on the catfish rods they've been soaking now for like 20 15 minutes Jump. i appreciate it Stuart. we got a bunch of these reels we got a bunch they're actually less expensive than it would cost just to ship one literally this rod and reel combo at walmart is like 13 bucks and the rod is the good part <laughs> here's my casting system release the bale Bail shut. Try it again. The bail doesn't open properly. You dead? There we go. Oh, that one was loaded on fully. I saw him actually turn and flash in the water before he got off. Seemed like a decent size. It's okay, guys. It is just a glorious Easter day out here. I do not care if we catch a fish, honestly. And Dylan already has, so we're good. So yeah, what I'm doing is I'm just releasing it, holding the rod towards where I want it to go, and then just throwing the weight with my hand.
wind's coming in. Where is this wind coming from? What's the smallest circle hooks that they make? Does anybody know? We're using like tiny little size eight hooks here, but I feel like if we could have circle hooks on a bobber, it would probably hook up a little bit better. These hooks are tiny, but I feel like the fish can know how to work around it or something. If we had a circle hook that was even smaller than this, they had to take the whole hook in, they would automatically get caught. Just a thought. Big rod, guys. Something just smacked the big rod on the right. Appreciate it. Happy Easter. Wonderful day to just celebrate. I'm also going to celebrate if this right rod goes down. Something just smacked it good twice.
feel like I'm more excited about the big rods right now. We'll get caught up on chat here real quick. Eh, not too much. Not too much to get caught up on. Steven, it seems like there should definitely be catfish in here. We caught one at night. We weren't sure if it was a catfish or a bullhead. It got off like right at the shore. We think it might have been a bullhead. We caught another big bullhead in here. We've had stuff take the baits before, but have not managed to bring in a catfish yet. Our timing's all off a little bit right now. We even tried one of Stuart's um, crappie jigs that he tied up yesterday. Couldn't get a crappie either. We're in a bit of a fishing slump here. We're still catching fish, but just not like we normally do. And we've taken some time off from bass fishing. Just kind of doing other stuff. Tried some trout fishing. We've been doing a lot of cat fishing. We're probably going to go surf fishing next week. But once we get back to the bass fishing, we'll take you guys out on the boat. You can watch us reel some fish in. This other kind of stuff is all fun experimental stuff until we figure out exactly what we're doing. If you put a bass rod in my hand and give me a lake with some fish in it, I'll go out there and catch some bass. <clears throat> We don't even know for sure if the kind of fish we're fishing for is in this water. <laughs> That's the tough part. We gotta figure it out. We did just have a couple nice bumps on the right rod, but then it stopped. So I'm gonna give the reel like two little turns. Maybe just move the bait just a hair. We were making this long form video this week. I got like three videos to edit guys. We're way behind on our posting. We've been making the videos. I've just been like too sick to sit in front of the computer for hours and edit them out. But we've got three good videos shot on the computer waiting to be edited. And we've been working on a fourth one. So what we did is a few nights ago, I recorded making four different kinds of catfish baits basically all chicken breast but flavored in different ways and we we recorded that and we we're going to do a fishing experiment to see which one of the baits would catch the most fish because i thought i had this awesome like tons of catfish in it kind of fish in a barrel spot we went out there tried all four different kinds of baits and tried to crappie fish a little bit caught nothing There's the owls. <laughs> so that video is like half shot because 
can't do a which bait's going to work the best. Steven, I only brought the regular bait, the, the catfish liver flavored with the nectar in it. I didn't bring the other experimental ones. We've caught catfish on that one before, so I figured today we're just going to try that one only. And I'm actually going to bring them in and refresh them and cast back out to the same spots because we're not going to be out here for hours today. I want to keep the bait fresh. So I'm going to do that right now. Maybe if I cast a little closer to shore where I've been throwing all the baits lately, they'll like that spot a little bit better. All right, nice and fresh. Hopefully that scent is kind of like spreading all over the area now. So it shouldn't take much longer. If there are catfish in here, you'd think they would come over and eat one. Or maybe just a bluegill. I'd be happy to catch another one of those big bluegill. <laughs> or bullhead. I meant to say bullhead, but bluegill counts too. Or a bowfin or a snakehead or an alligator. I don't care. Just something to take those rods down. We lived like six or seven hours south of here down down on the tip of Florida 
or actually anywhere from central Florida south, there's like tons and tons of invasive species that live down there. I lived down there when I was younger. We used to catch like peacock bass and mudfish and all kinds of crazy stuff. Super fun. And there was also tons of carp. Like carp that would be like three feet long or bigger. But up here, it's pretty much all native stuff. I guess the cold, the winter gets cold enough to where the tropical fish that people release can't really survive the winters here. So I'm sure people still let stuff go because that happens everywhere, but they just don't make it and they don't start spawning and everything. So we don't have as many invasives here as they do in South Florida. No slack in the line. Perfect. Also, another thing about yesterday when we were out on the boat, we anchored up. So the wind was changing direction slightly, and as the boat was doing this, what happened? <laughs> as the boat was drifting a little bit with the wind, it kept pulling the lines and then going slack, and then pulling the lines and going slack. So we may have missed some bites just because it made it a little bit harder. I think what I'm going to try next time we go catfishing on the boat is bring in two anchors. And I'll get the bow anchor set up. Right over us. I'll get the bow anchor set up, let the boat settle. And then as soon as the boat settles in a good spot, I'll throw a stern anchor off too and just kind of like tie it tight. And that'll keep the boat from moving as much. You guys ever try that when you uh, catfish off a boat? I've never catfished off a boat before. <laughs> Dad, you don't think there might be catfish in here? I don't know. We're, we're trying it. Stuart, yes. This is where Stewart's catfish came out of. And bluegill and sunfish make great bait. Yes, they do, but we already had this bait. And we're not gonna be out here for a super long time. Yeah, Steven, it was the same liver-soaked catfish. Actually, the one that Stewart caught was just the crust of a bread. That was just, I think, a weird <laughs> fluke situation. But the other one we caught was on the same bait, the chicken with the liver soaked in it. It was liver? Straight liver? Oh, Dylan says it was straight liver. Okay, well, if we, um, we'll do another bait check here shortly, and then I'll put straight liver on one of them it was meant to be i mean liver is technically more stinky than the chicken breast so i would like to like that more. they've been soaking together in the same bag for like three days now so i'm pretty sure they both have the same scent by now the bluegill bite is tough today they're taking them down but they're not really committing to it bit come say hi to everybody Lucas has been hiding in the background but he's here I'll let him say hi come here buddy <laughs> come on say hi to everybody he's hiding in the background and now he thinks it's a game because he won't come over here everybody's saying hi Lucas oh there he is there he is Say hi, Lucas. Hi. 
Tell them how many fish you caught today. Hmm? Tell them how many fish you caught today. None. <laughs> <laughs> None, because he's not fishing. You want to fish? Uh -uh. Uh, all right. You know, just hang out on the golf cart. Stuart says hi. Oh, he's got a fishing rod in his hand. What's going to happen? You want me to cast it for you one time? How do I even the, cast it? The reel doesn't work right. Here, I'll cast it for you and you can hold it. Is that even a rod? <laughs> All right, Lucas is fishing too. Yeah, it could be. It could be true, Dad. We don't know, but we figured we'd try it and see. Grampy says hi, Lucas. Hi, Grampy. Hi, Grampy. Still fighting off this cold. It's all up in my head now, at least. I don't have the whole body thing going on anymore. Just leave it right there. It'll go under. When I get home from this, I'm taking the lawnmower out. Got a bunch of grass to mow. And then we'll have our delicious Easter dinner. You lost your bait? You want me to put a new one on? I was getting little nibbles. Yeah, I saw. They didn't take it all the way down. Dad, there actually are dragons right now. Dragonfly. I want to chum a little piece. Stuart, we would need a bunch of horses. For what? For what? To keep our lawn mowed. <laughs> Some people do it with goats. But you need like a whole flock of goats or a herd of goats. Can I chum this? Yeah.
but keeping the horses fed and healthy and vet bills and stable costs and all that wouldn't be worth it. If it goes under for like more than a second, start reeling it real fast. No, they're still hitting it. They're still hitting it. See how it's moving around? Lucas has definitely got something on his on his bait. His bobber is just twitching. <laughs> the Amish community has Dad, I need to check my bait. No, they're still on there, buddy. No, the bait's They've got some things figured out because they do everything themselves. Some of the stuff is a little questionable, like their dental practices and stuff, but they do everything themselves, so nothing costs anything. So they can live a pretty high lifestyle, like have really nice houses and big land and all this other stuff, because they don't have any bills. Their horses probably don't live as long as regular stable horses. They probably eat them afterwards. I don't know. I think in um, Japan, raw horse meat is a delicacy. Like a fancy food that you don't eat very often. Raw horse meat. I saw it on the Outdoor Boys, actually. So far, we've used this much bait. Dad, I need to reel it in. My bobber's gone. I meant my lure's gone. No, it's not. I meant, no, my, they're still biting it. My bait's gone. Yeah, they're biting it, dude. My bait's gone. Oh, no, it's not. Come, Okay, just reel it in then. Now you got it stuck in the weeds. All right, I'm gonna cast Lucas's again. I need to do the chunk to the same spot. I'm gonna cast it, and you show him where you are. Don't cast it that far. Cast it to where you know I can throw the chunk. Like cast it in that little. No, we want to get it out past the weeds. I know it's that little. All right, he just chummed himself a good spot right in front of it. Hey, Jerry, thanks for coming in. Catfish flavored cake. It was actually a carrot cake. <laughs> 
I saw your comment pop up as we were coming over here. We didn't have any catfish or anything yet. <laughs> I wonder if catfish cake would be... I mean, they make like a bunch of different kinds of fish dips and stuff. <laughs> Yeah, kind of like chicken fried catfish. It went under. He reeled it into the woods again, into the weeds again. It went under. You can run in when it goes under. I can hear lots of kids yelling and playing in the background. Definitely a holiday. Everybody's starting to get up. It went down and I reeled it in, but it got off again. Yep, Dylan's up on me. Today's the tiebreaker. It went down, but it got off again. I can't say I put in the same amount of casts that he has, but... That's okay. It's Easter Sunday. We're just relaxing. That was weird. It, it was like he held it under the, my bobber under water, but he didn't touch on with it. He just stayed still. It was like a fish sitting. Oh. Alright, this time don't reel it until the bobber's all the way under. He was all the way under. <laughs> he'll do it Stuart he'll get one on him one time they're kind of light for these little rods we're going to have to use the crappy the crappie rods that are a lot lighter action these things even though they're small they're pretty stiff and they don't really have a lot of whip to them so it's hard to cast I've actually caught like two and three pound largemouth bass on the dock demon off the hook thanks for coming in happy bobbers? easter to you and everybody are there bobbers on these rods nope no bobbers those are on the bottom with weights Lucas says he's done fishing. He gave it a good effort. That's all right, buddy. One of Lucas's Easter presents this morning was Robux. So he put... I got 801 Robux. He got 801 Robux to add to his Roblox account. And, and so now that, all he wants to do is play Roblox. And now I'm on that 600 Robux. You already spent 201 Roblox? Robux? Yep. I'm not exactly at 600. I'm like <laughs> at 655. 
this reel is so shot. You can't pull the line out. Stuart says that's awesome, buddy. It'll re-engage when you turn, but it's not re-engaging anything because you've released the bale. The line won't come out. And then you turn the handle and it re-engages something. Doesn't make any sense. Now I can't even get it to release at all. This could be the end of my day, guys. Oh, there, it just released for no reason. Didn't do anything different. Bluegill bite is slow today, guys. <laughs> Jerry says, nice sword, Lucas. <laughs> Stuart says, nice, Lucas, you got your own filleting knife. <laughs> it's just wood. Jerry, Mama Fishhead got prime rib for us. She's at home prepping stuff. We're going to have a prime rib dinner. Like the whole rib roast and then we'll slice it into steaks. It's gonna be delicious. She knows prime rib is like basically my favorite food. 
ribeye steak, prime rib, and maybe lobster tail, lobster, main lobster. Those are like tied for the top spot on my list of best food. Lobster is so ridiculously expensive now. We haven't had it in like a year, year and a half. I get this weekly newsletter with all the price lists and everything from our local seafood shop. Goose. And the price of lobster kept going up and up like like two, three years ago in the summertime, it would drop down to like 10 bucks a pound. And we'd usually have it a couple times during the summer. Um, and it kept going up and up and up and up. Right now it's at like 25 bucks a pound. And the lobsters are like two, two and a half pounds. So you're spending like 70 bucks per person to have a main lobster. which is a little outrageous. Prime time for sure. <laughs> it's all right, Stuart, we don't need another reel. We're not gonna be out here too much longer. I just wanted to give these rods another try today and get outside and enjoy myself before I have to mow and then enjoy dinner but I gotta break it up with some mowing I'm talking like a good solid four hours of mowing and I'll probably save like the weed whacking and trimming and everything for a night during the week when I get off when there's when there's time at night ham and homemade potato salad delicious Pretty good, Jerry. I can eat ham and homemade potato salad. If the potato salad is nice and like acidic. I don't like the ones that you get at like Walmart and it's just all creamy. I like it when it's got like the vinegary acidic taste to it. Jerry, Dylan's job when he turns like 12, which he's 11 now, is gonna be at least partial mowing. I'll pay him a little bit. It'll be like his allowance to mow. He knows it, but he refuses to accept it. It's, it's gonna become his responsibility. Lucas is now teasing Dylan, and then they'll start arguing. No arguing. Sword, buddy, doing that. Here comes the wind again, guys. I'm gonna chop the wind. Yeah, it's gonna be a war zone in our house. That's why we're building an addition to make our house bigger. I'm chop. I'm gonna chop the wind. The geese never come over here at this lake. I don't know what's going on. They're coming over. 
Oh, uh, maybe not. He I'm just gonna, he just turned around. I'm gonna try to trim a piece so it goes kind of far out. Why not that? Trim this next to the duck. No, he's not gonna he's not gonna come that far, dude. I doubt it, Stuart. We got a lot of stuff to do at the house. Being sick all this time and still doing YouTube, I have basically neglected all of my duties at home. I still haven't like cleaned and organized and put away all the camping stuff from our trip two weeks ago. I gotta get all the sleeping bags stored for next season. The tent packaged up so we can use it again. Do a little bit of cleaning. All the camping dishes are still dirty in the cooler. There's a bunch of stuff to clean and do tonight. Have everything done so this week when I go back to work, I can work but also edit those videos. We're three videos if you missed it. Three videos now behind on editing. We have three videos we need to edit and post. Which I've never had three before. I've been up to two a couple times, but I've never had three. So if I was super lazy, we could not film for like three weeks and we'd still have a video every week. <laughs> but that's not how we do it. We're always filming for the next video. Oh, I thought he had one. So they just keep piling up on me while I'm sick. But hopefully tonight, after I clean and everything, I can get at least half of the South Carolina trout fishing adventure video done. Maybe tomorrow night, finish that one, get it posted for Tuesday, then have another one come out Friday. And then I'll be back down to two because we'll have the catfish one, maybe if we catch any catfish this week. We might end up scrapping the catfish one. Yeah, Dylan's fishing hard. He's already up one on me. I'm gonna actually just concede it because I'm not gonna try for bluegill again before we leave. We gotta go pretty soon so I can get to this mowing. So Dylan is this week's bluegill champion. Dylan, I've announced you the champion of the week. He's not acknowledging that we're doing anything. Dylan, Dylan, you're this week's champion. <laughs> Jerry says congratulations. No money involved. This is not a betting scenario. I don't know if I told you guys, but I took over the admin for the National Bass League. It's an online bass tournament, monthly bass tournament. There's no money unless you're in the bracket system. Uh, but if you're just in the regular monthly tournaments, there's no money. It's free to fish and there's no prize money, but there's prize packs because there's a few different sponsors. So you get like a bunch of lures and maybe like a knife or some line or something like that the winner every month and then at the end of the year there's an angler angler of the year and it's usually like a fishing rod and a trophy and some prize packs stuff like that but um the bracket system if you wanted to get in on that is you have like it's almost like uh march madness or something you start with like 12 fishermen two of them fish against each other go on to the next bracket, on to the next bracket. They all pay an entry fee. And then either like the winner takes all or the top two, you know, 60, 40 or something like that. 
So that's pretty cool. I haven't finished getting everything set up, but what I want to do with it, because now I'll be running those tournaments, is do a monthly live stream on Fishhead videos, talking about the month's tournament and, you know, fish picks and having the guys that were fishing in the tournament on the live stream to talk about it, their catches and standings and results and all that stuff. So it's going to be a pretty cool thing. I just got to figure out how to mesh the two together a little bit better. Because that's on Facebook. It's never been on YouTube at all. Uh, it's all like run on Facebook. Everything's on Facebook. So I'm trying to like work it out so they can post everything to Facebook and then I can get everything for YouTube and then be able to make a live stream out of it. And I'm going to have to get the paid version of StreamYard, obviously. So a couple things going on there, but it'll be cool. Oh, Dylan, Stewart's idea is that you win, so you get to choose where we fish next time. Jerry says that's a good idea. What are we picking for? You get to pick. So Dylan will pick, because obviously whatever species we're going for depends on where we're going to go. So we'll let him pick the species and the location. It may not be till next weekend. We might want to go surf fishing. I'll recommend that to him. No. I know he likes surf fishing. We'll see. And he can pick a spot. We'll definitely let you know. <laughs> Jerry's guessing bluegill. Where? I know where we're going. Where? Where? Lake Ammonia? We're going bass fishing at the private lake. Bass fishing, okay. Where I can come to? <laughs> no, our family can come. That can we come? Can I, oh. could, could I come with you? Yeah, you can come, buddy. <laughs> Lucas wants to go bass fishing. I'm not gonna. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. Gave it a good, decent little effort here. It's been an hour and 20 minutes. All right, last cast for Dylan, and then I'll wrap it up. Nah, we got to get going. Osprey. Uh, it was probably a little too high for you guys to see. Big old Osprey. Okay, that was the last cast, no, guys. It it's Happy Easter to everybody. Appreciate y'all coming in. We'll see you in the next one.